I was trying to think of a way that I could work that bed into my presentation, and then I was like, no, don't go there. <laughs> so uh, free breakfast and coffee was provided to us by Bridgehead. Uh, the amazing juices were from Six Cold Press Juice, and the food was from Red Apron, so huge shout out to them. Uh, again, yeah. <laughs> and Shopify, our uh, supporting sponsor. And again, the amazing people at uh, Masterpiece VR. I hope some of you got to check it out before they took it down. There was a nice VR experience here. Uh, FMAV, oh my god, you guys. <sighs> Seriously. Shout out to Paul. <laughs> if you run events, you know the stress behind uh, setting up AV, so it's really nice to have them here today. And then last but not least, Camp Tech. Camp Tech is running a contest. These slides are horribly placed. Oh, they were nice on my computer last night, I promise. <laughs> Um, so if you use the hashtag, send me to CamTech, and you give a little tweet to CamTech, you can actually win a $100 gift card to some of their courses. They do things like uh, social media classes, SEO classes, and it's a really great opportunity to develop your skill. Um, yeah, so obviously we love this city. We have so much support, so thank you so much, and thank you for being here today. And oh my god, my slides. Oh, shout out to, my, to the amazing volunteer team that does this every month for you guys, so big round of applause for them. Alright, that's all the clapping I'll make you do today, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce Seiku Kaba to the stage. As you know, he's a Canadian Olympian, he's also a photographer, motivational speaker, and a nice friend of mine. We uh, actually met over a love for overpriced sneakers uh, a couple years ago. So I'm really excited to have him here today, and I'd like to bring him up to the stage. Seiku! Can you guys hear me? Am I yelling? Is my mic on? Yes? Amazing. Good to see you all, guys. I uh, am happy to be here. Thanks again for the introduction, Maxine. This is an awesome venue. I wish I'd discovered this earlier. Maybe I'd get some of my speeches here. <laughs> but uh, yes, it's Volunteer Week in Ottawa, so special thanks to all the volunteers. If you're one of them, pat yourself on the back. And uh, there you go. I, I volunteer for many causes, and so it's, it's important to do your part. If you're not a volunteer, get out there. If you are, do more. <laughs> I believe I need the remote, Maxine. Thank you. Awesome. This is cool. So, this is me. Seiku Kaba, and uh, I had the awesome opportunity and privilege of representing Canada at the past Olympic Games. It was an experience of a lifetime, and uh, one that I will cherish and remember for the rest of my life. So at this time, I'd like to bring you guys along into my world with a short video. There are people out there supporting me and have been for, for so long. And uh, it's great to see my hard work flourish a little bit. It's not a gift to be an Olympian. You need to earn it. And I can honestly say that I've, I've earned this spot. I've made it. So to be an Olympian is uh, a dream come true, definitely. Yeah. Something to remember for the rest of my life. Thank you. Thank 
you very much. And I have to say, I haven't seen the video in that format before. And you know what? Since we were here at Creative Mornings, that was pretty awesome. That, I think I was, would you call that like digital camo or something like that? And uh, special thanks to my buddy John up there who actually created that video. So thanks a lot, buddy. So when I think of the word beyond, I think endless opportunities. I think stretching and breaking through barriers. And those are all positive thoughts. And I'd be remiss to say that beyond is always a company of positive thoughts. When you're in the dark place and you think beyond, you can think fear. You can think the very obstacle in front of you. You can think uncertainty. And those are negative thoughts. And those thoughts disable us. They basically impede on us achieving our goal. Through imagination, we're able to assemble thoughts. And we put these thoughts into plans, and we're able to execute them through action and perseverance. And that's how you create your, your imagination. That's how you create your dream. To dream is to go beyond. And one of the most awesome stories that I, I think read two years ago was a young Canadian boy at the age of nine, farm boy from Sarnia, had this idea in his mind to want to roam around in space. And never told anyone what he wanted to do, but it started as a thought, an idea. He literally decided to start living his life as a pretend game. And he would do something every single day that he thought would eventually get him to where he wants to go. And he worked and worked from nine until he was an adult. And somewhere along the line, everything he did turned out to work in his favor. And long story short, this young boy went on to be Chris Hadfield, great Canadian astronaut. So, Keep in mind that whatever it is you'd like to accomplish in life, it begins up here. Whatever you see, you can touch, it starts here, and someone executes it to being a thing. So do believe in beyond. If you look at your tags, mine says uh, beyond. I think it says someday I, like, I love to move beyond realistic. Because I believe in order to go beyond, you have to think unrealistic. If someone has ever told you to be realistic, odds are they haven't done something unrealistic. So don't listen to them. Do your own thing. On this list, you'll find, I guess you can call them tags or titles. Associate yourself with as many as you like. There isn't one. There may be a voice in your head kind of debating if one or the other is better for you. But the more the merrier, I think. Because I believe that you shouldn't be locked in whatever's in here. You, sh you should think you're, like you're more than your elevator pitch, is what I say. So next time you're in the elevator, don't, don't lock yourself in that elevator. Instead of shaking someone's hands and saying, hi, I'm X, I'm an entrepreneur. Say with confidence, hi, I'm X, a man, woman of many things, and uh, let's chat. That sparks curiosity, to me at least. If you talk to me that way, that, it's like, ping, I want to know what you do. But if you tell me I'm an entrepreneur and let's say I'm an athlete or I'm an artist, I'm just like, oh, another one, you know, <laughs> I'm not interested. That's me personally. So don't lock yourself in that box. Own the fact that you're many things in life. Don't just be an athlete. Don't just be an entrepreneur. Don't just be a coach. 
an ally, a brother, an employer, and so on. I'd like to take you guys through uh, something I came up with called 13 Seconds of Achievement. And I chose 13 because it's the time that I run in a hurdle race. It takes me 13 seconds to overcome 10 obstacles, barriers, whatever you want to call it, and uh, hurdles also. Funny, I'll go off topic when I talk to people and uh, to switch things up, I don't just say I'm a hurdler. I say, oh, what do you do, say you? Uh, I overcome obstacles for a living. <laughs> <laughs> and so that people love that answer. And uh, yeah, so 13 seconds, because that's how long it takes me to achieve my race. And I kind of thought, in order to for me to accomplish this big Olympic dream I've set for myself. I need to just live my dream, live my imagination, and maybe I can get there. So how do I put myself in position to constantly get after my goal, my dream? And I came up with the concept of 13 seconds of achievement, and I don't even know how long I've been doing it, because it's been a while. It's the very first time I share it with anyone because it's my idea, my thought, it should be here, I'm doing it for myself. So, it's very simple. I'll ask you to close your eyes for only 13 seconds and you have five seconds to focus, lock in on your biggest goal you'd like to achieve for five seconds. After five seconds, the next five, I want you to feel as if you've achieved that dream. Feel it. Put yourself in that state. And then the last three seconds, I want you to just smile. <laughs> Attach emotions to your goal. Are you guys ready? On your marks. Get set. Go. And time. Uh, based on my innate sense of timing, I stopped you guys at 13.43 seconds, <laughs> which actually happens to be my personal best in the hurdles. <laughs> so that's uh, very interesting. So th thank you guys for going beyond with me. I appreciate it. And so if you can use this, I don't know how long it takes you to get your work done, or if you apply this to your walk of life, it needs to be yours, your goal, your dream, your timeline, your deadline, whatever it is. Think of your goals. Pretend you've achieved them and attach emotions to them. And I guarantee you, whatever it is you've thought of will come to life. And that is how you will go beyond. So keep that in mind. The body does what the mind thinks. So spread your wings and fly. I really, really like that one because, one, I took that photo. <laughs> Two, the quote is amazing because in order for me to get over this thing here, my brain tells me to first get over here, and then you kind of have to come up with ways to maneuver the barrier, the obstacle. For me, this is a hurdle. It's very simple. I can see it. But for some obstacles in life, they're not all visible. And so you have to kind of channel your inner hurdler and maneuver them. So I'll take you guys through a 33-inch obstacle in life. I have a 36 inch obstacle in life. It gets higher, guys. <laughs> now your biggest problem is now 39 inches. And then finally, by the end, your problem in life is now 42 inches. 
how do you do this? So you kind of put your mind to it. You believe that you can do this, which is exactly how I did it. It took me 13 years to become an Olympian. And I didn't just pop out of somewhere and boom, it happened. No, it takes time. Time, effort, energy, perseverance, and lots of fun stuff you'll discover on the journey to your goal. And this is the Olympic hype. It's, I overcome 10 of these in 13.43 seconds. When you achieve, you discover your purpose in life. And if I were to tell you that whatever it is you're working towards, because I believe whatever you're working towards will help you discover your purpose in life, will basically be captured in six photos. This would be that for me. I worked extremely hard for 13 years to be one of those happy faces in the top left corner. <laughs> I don't know if you can spot Satan, but he's right in the middle. Yes, third person. The second photo is basically my flash of my Olympic race. Obviously, 10 hurdles to overcome. And I think I got over the first few pretty well. By the end, I hit that 10th one. And usually when I click hurdles, I literally just go over it. And let's be dramatic. <laughs> when I clip hurdles, I clip and I continue, no problem. But in Rio, I clipped. Came down on the hurdle, kind of lost my balance, had to climb out of it, and by the time I got to the finish line, I realized it was too late for me to move on to the next round and realize, you know, another Olympic run, a possible possibility of a medal, and so on and so forth. So as soon as that happened, I realized that had vanished, basically. So right then and there, I had to go inside here, which is bigger than myself. I had to think of now you've accomplished this thing, good for you, what next? Do you sit still? Well, now that you've had a horrible race, do you go back to the hotel and cry like a baby? Or do you pick yourself up and show the world that you're more than your race? You're more than just an athlete. So the next photo is my interview I gave after my race. And it was organic. I spoke from the heart. But for some reason, the words I apparently so perfectly chose stood up to so many Canadians. And it blew me away because right after the interview, I kind of did my cool down and ran back to my phone, which I shouldn't have done. I checked my email, and I swear to you, I had 50 emails like in a span of 20 minutes. And it was just Canadians from all over the country. Oh my God, you represented the country so well. You spoke highly of the country, where to kind of keep your composure. And I was like, wow, like what have I done? <laughs> I just, I literally just spoke from the heart about my race, and this is the impact that it's left. Guys, I was like offered I was job offers, uh, let's have coffee, can I do this for you, can I do that for you? And I was like, guys, I clipped the hurdle and like it was dead last in my race. <laughs> like, how do I deserve this, you know? And so it blew me away. So right then and there I realized, okay, it's now bigger than you. You're more than just an athlete now. You have to do your part in having an impact on the world, making a difference. And immediately after, I joined my friends in the bottom left to enjoy the rest of the Olympic Games. And we watched probably the best pole vault competition of all time, or the a Brazilian one. And just sitting there watching those guys just watch me live my dream just made the world a better place. And they, not, they, didn't, they didn't give me a time of day to be down on myself. And that was so important to me. So from that moment, as I said, I realized it was bigger than me. So ever since, I've literally been sharing my story 
everywhere I have the opportunity to because I've come from somewhere and so I had to work hard to get to where I am and now I'm making an impact. And that's the very first gig I was offered is a citizenship ceremony. Like, hey, thank you, you spoke highly of the country. Uh, can you come tell us again how you went through the immigration system and uh, how you say you started learning English 11 years ago, but you're lying? I was like, oh, I'm not. I, I'm still learning English, guys. And I started learning it in 2001. And uh, yeah, I think it's gotten me kind of far. If I make any mistakes, send me an email and uh, tell me. So, yeah, I love talking to kids. Two hours after this, I will be in Elmont talking to you uh, in elementary school. So, that will be awesome. These are some of the great organizations I've had the opportunity to work with since Rio. Green Tea Photography is Canada's best wedding photographer. Mathieu is an amazing guy, and he invited me to shoot a wedding with him, and it was such a blast. He kind of spilled the news I was an Olympian. So we do the entire day of shooting, and it's not the reception. I walk in, and like small benches lined up perfectly. <laughs> I guarantee you, lined up perfectly, three, four feet apart, and then everybody's just kind of standing there waiting for me. <laughs> Are you kidding me? What is this? You're like, come on, the music's not coming on until you do this. I'm like, wow, thank you for making me a part of your wedding. I, I appreciate it. That photographer, hurdler, all at one place. So it was amazing. Proud to be me, uh, the NAC, YMCA, New Services Bureau, and the list goes on. So it's through these brands and what I've done to kind of share my story and have an impact that I've discovered my purpose. That's, that's, that's us. So K Kashani is one of the most creative people that I know, okay? She wears like 60,000 hats, and I thought what better way to kind of recognize what she does than to do it at creative mornings in front of a bunch of creative people. So, there's, there, there's that. And uh, if you didn't realize, maybe I can go back for you guys. Maybe not. I took the photos of all the backgrounds to this presentation. And uh, I absolutely love to do photography. And it's, it's a getaway. So that's me being more than just an athlete. So I do have something creative to offer. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. I uh, appreciate your time. Sometimes we forget, or we, we have a tendency of looking at creativity in a certain way, and we always expect the end of mornings to be maybe specific to that exact, you know, designer, artist type trade, but it's really nice to welcome you to the stage, and you gave a great perspective. Thank you. Um, we want to open the floor up to some questions. Hopefully, this can be sometimes the best part of the conversation and of the talk. Good morning. I've never been able to figure out how anyone gets over a hurdle as high as the ones you get over. So could you explain your creative approach to actually getting over that thing at the speed you're going at? Definitely. I can, uh, so at the stage that I'm at, Elite Hurdling, and the speed, we, and, <laughs> amazing, she's ready for a hug, and the speed we, we, we kind of travel as we get to this thing, the, the creative thing to do would be to take off further back from the hurdle. That way you land perfectly on the other end, right around here, and you propel yourself forward in preparation for the next one. The not so creative thing to do would be to take off right around here. That's how you end up eating Mondo, which is <laughs> what, what the track is made of. And uh, that's how you get, I mean, there are many different ways. The, the way is to just go with your lead leg, your trail leg, kind of everything in unison, come down as one, throw yourself forward. 
I guess you're wearing the wrong pants to give us a demonstration. Huh? You know what? Don't, don't try me. <laughs> Remember, realistic is what we're trying to go beyond. And I, and I accept any challenge. It, it would be okay if you bring it down. <laughs> I'm going to do it. I don't know if we're insured for this. Let's go down. 39 is good. Let, let, let's, let, let's do this uh, long jump style. So as I get closer to the hurdle, five jump again. You ready? state and right before you're about to start, what are the things that you're, what are the thoughts that are going through your mind? On race day, let's see, my mind is blank. I uh, consume a lot of awesome music and then I race. Simple as that because when it's race day, the work's already been done. There's absolutely nothing you can do to perform better that day except focus and do what you practice. There's no reason to focus on something new that day. Focus on the task at hand, which is to perform. And you're all here from different walks of life. At the end of the day, the parallel I can make from anyone who's a lawyer or whatever it is to me being an elite athlete. At the end of the day, when you go to work, when I go to the track, we have to perform. And so performance is important, and in order to accomplish that, you just literally just take it day by day, step at a time. Focus on what's at hand with the bigger end result in mind at all times. Good question. Thank you. Um, entrepreneurs, like athletes, experience performance plateaus. What's your philosophy on moving beyond that plateau? Lovely question, I love it. And so, having friends, like I just showed you in that photo, having music, having a loving family, having a loving coach, having this other thing that I just chatted about, which is outside of what you do, to kind of immerse yourself in. So do you forget about the plateau for a little bit? I think it's so important that when you come back, you have a new life. You move beyond, as I say, you're now endless opportunities. You know, open arms, let's get over this hurdle because I've done so much of like what I love and my escape. Now I can focus here. And I guarantee 99% of the time, you come back to it, it's just like, you know, I'm not performing well at the track. I rest a little bit, hang out with buddies, listen to my favorite tunes, and just, I come back and it's like, <laughs> Amazing. Love it. So uh, escape through your uh, other, other, other avenues. That's what I would say. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Where are we? Right here. Right here. Right beside Maxine. Yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Okay. There we are. I like your shoes. Nice shoes. Um, can you talk a bit about uh, failure and how you use that as a tool to keep motivating yourself to move forward? Certainly. I've uh, failed many, many times. Growing up in Guinea, which is in Conakry, or the other way, Conakry is in Guinea. It's in West Africa where I was born. You, uh, well, I, I'll speak on my behalf, took a lot of risks. Some were smart. Some were dumb. I failed a lot, more than a lot of my cousins and family members. But I think the difference there is that I kind of just did what came to mind. And in those failures, I use the barrier, which is the failure, as motivation to kind of use my imagination to, okay, how else do I overcome this? What else can I do? And so at the track, when, I mean, you will have 
so I, for example, I train eight, seven months out of the year for one big performance. There's been years I've done that twice. I mean, I've done that two years in a row without a great peak performance. And so to constantly know what you want and just work towards it inch by inch, it's not going to be hinky-dory every day. Not at all. So you just have to keep the goal in mind and pick yourself up and really know that this is yours. You have to protect it. You can't let a horrible day or one small, I don't believe in failures, they're all lessons. So one small lesson ruin it all for you. So that's how I'd go about that. Good question. Um, on a side note, <laughs> anybody who is parked outside is getting towed right now. <laughs> yeah, so if you're there, you might want to move, including myself. Me too. My, myself as well. So that's a, a couple cars smooth. And since we're here on this great platform, I'll kind of do a disappearing moment to grab my key. <laughs> And then reappear magically <laughs> with my key. There you go, Sam. Thank you. Yeah, let's go for it. I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. All right, you're far left. Far left. There you go. Yes. <laughs> um, great presentation. Thank you. Um, quick question about training. Because yes. there's some times during training where you're going to push yourself to obviously get you know, stronger, better, faster. Mm -hmm. So what was the hardest thing mentally for you in training? Was, it, was there one kind of uh, exercise that you did or how did you surpass that one training moment where it was just difficult and you had to get past that? So for me, it's not moments, it's distance. I'm no good after 30 seconds. Like my life is just in ruins, <laughs> okay? So hats off to all the marathoners and half marathoners and. My God, you guys blow my mind if any of you are in here. As I said, I'm no good after 30 seconds. So for me, it was distance. And during workouts, 200 meters, yes, it's below 30 seconds. But in my like kind of middle phase, whereas I sucked. So let's say ninth grade, you should get beat by women. women. Uh, 12th grade, I was slowly coming up. And then boom, Olympics. So from like 12th grade to those four years, absolutely hated the 200 meters and uh, it was through talking to my coach and doing lots of kind of positive self-talk and you know some fun psychology stuff that I realized okay so clearly this is perception this 200 meter barrier is there because I've placed it there and so in order to overcome it I need to embrace it and I did that and literally something clicked my time just got better and better because it was no longer an obstacle. It became an asset. And so I used it as such to kind of get forward. And so whatever it is you're going through, you kind of look at it from a different angle. I, I mentor this kid and uh, he's so awesome. He, I do a lot of reading and for some reason I've never come across this quote before. He said, everything is a blessing depending on how you angle it. I was like, wow, I'm sure it's been said other ways before, but those exact words kind of never, I've never read anywhere together. I've never clicked in my mind like that. I was like, wow, well done, buddy. I really appreciate that. So next time you fail or go through a lesson, angle it differently. It may be a blessing in disguise and use it as such. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. I think, oh, we have one more here. I was just wondering, uh, you, seem to, you seem to have a very big focus on mindsets, and I was just wondering who or what has uh, greatly influenced your positive thinking and your mindsets? I think uh, my background, loving family, uh, caring coaches, and also my, my goals, my beliefs, and my dreams, my imaginations. And sometimes I find we put too much focus on other humans to kind of do our things for us. And so if it's really your goal and your dream, kind of start up here and then branch out a bit. But at the end of the day, it ends here as well because 
in that performance moment, or whatever it is you're getting towards. Yes, you go mental, you think about it, consult some people. But when it's time to do it, and you've worked so hard toward, to get there, it's 80% mental. And just you being there is the other 20%. So that's your body just being there. So that's why the focus on the mind and the thought is so important in accomplishing your purpose in life. And I don't think it should be overlooked because you can do anything in life if you believe in it. And if you believe you can do anything, you can be anything. So keep that in mind. Thank you.